Does the Bible tell me that the Holy Ghost is a person? Does the Bible tell me that the Holy Ghost is God? The same Bible is telling me that God is a spirit and they that worship him must, they must, must worship him. The Holy Ghost is God in the earth today, and you walk with Him by saying words. My name is Andrew Hemstrott. Thank you for joining us. We're going to use a text here as an outline, which means we'll go back to it. We'll use other verses to support it, but we'll go back to this verse of Scripture. John chapter 4, verse 24. God is a spirit, and they that worship Him must worship Him in spirit and in truth. Is this in your Bible? Yes, All right. Now, verse 20, our fathers worshiped in this mountain, and you say that in Jerusalem is the place where men ought to worship. Say to worship. To worship. And Jesus, verse 21, Jesus saith unto her, Woman, believe me, the hour cometh when you shall neither in this mountain nor yet at Jerusalem worship the Father. Verse 22, you worship, you know not what. We know what we worship, for salvation is of the Jews. But the hour cometh, and now is, when the true worshipers, say true worshipers. When the true worshipers shall worship the Father in spirit and in truth. For the Father seeks such to worship him. Verse 24. God is a spirit, and they that worship him must worship him in spirit and in truth. Is this in your Bible? Yes, it is. All right. Now, the first thing I want to get out of the way here is we can understand Jesus is literally answering her question. She said, Hey, I've got, you know, we, we worship God here, and you say we're supposed to worship God there. Who has it right? You understand that? Yes. Well, so the number one thing and the overarching thing. That we're, he's trying to get across to her is that you don't have to worship God just in Jerusalem mm -hmm. or at Jacob's well or any other place are you here yes. that's the general thrust of what he's trying to get across to her mm -hmm. does this make sense yes. man we know that right we can worship God here in this building we can worship God on the street mm -hmm. you don't and you don't have to worship facing Jerusalem so that's generally what say generally. generally generally what he's trying to get across to her but he's also revealing many more important dispensational truths that if we can hear it we can have mm -hmm. many of which they were not able to bear right then anyways mm -hmm. John chapter 16 verse 12 I have yet many things to say unto you but you cannot bear them now verse 13 how be it when he say he, he he the spirit of truth is come he will guide you into all the truth well who do we know the spirit of truth is he's the Holy Ghost so Jesus is saying here and everything that he was talking to people about they couldn't quite bear it now because the he the Holy Ghost had not come yet right, right? So even though he might be talking about things that are to come they couldn't bear it they couldn't understand it and they certainly couldn't live in it mm -hmm. until the he the Holy Ghost came at which point they would be in a different dispensation John chapter 7 verse 37 in the last day the great day of the feast Jesus stood and cried saying if any man thirst let him come unto me and drink he that believes on me as the scriptures have said out of his belly shall flow rivers of living water verse 39 you have a verse 39 in your Bible yes. but this spake he of the Spirit which they that believe on him should receive say should receive, should receive. what does that mean should receive. should receive but it's also in the in the future right yes. when Jesus was talking the Holy Ghost was not there given so they it was something that was going to come to pass in the future yes. that's really all I'm trying to get across here look at this what but this spake he of the spirit 
they that believe on him should receive for the holy ghost was not yet given because that jesus was not yet glorified that means that there's coming a dispensation that's not this one yes you understand that yes. when jesus gets glorified and sends the holy ghost that will be a new dispensation mm -hmm. we'll read this again look at verse 20 again our fathers worshiped in this mountain and you say that in jerusalem is the place where men ought to worship so we're talking about worship verse 21 jesus saith unto her woman believe me the hour cometh are you here yes. so he's talking about something that cometh when you shall neither in this mountain nor yet at jerusalem worship the father mm -hmm. verse 22 you worship you know not what for we know what we worship for salvation is of the jews that word could also be through the jews we know that it, you don't to get saved you don't have to go and become a jewish person and follow all the rules of the law you understand that we know that in our day say in our day, in our day. i want you to keep that straight in your head in our day we know salvation is through believing on jesus and receiving the work that the Holy Ghost does on the inside of you Amen. that's salvation right yes. so he's going salvation is of the Jews he's meaning it's through the Jews we know that through the Jewish people that's where Jesus came God doesn't change but the way we worship him does say God doesn't, God doesn't change but the way we worship him, we worship him does. does can you see that I mean, I don't have time to go through all of this, but the way our method of worshiping him or approaching him certainly does change. Mm -hmm. So God doesn't change, but the way, say the way. the way. The way we worship him does change according to knowledge, according to the covenants, and according to the dispensations that you're in. Mm -hmm. It's a new day with a new covenant. Could it have been the day that he was talking about to these people, to this to this Sumerian woman only in the future yes. the time when she was there it could not be that nobody was born again nobody was filled with the Holy Ghost the Holy Ghost was not yet given that's a, that's an age to come mm -hmm. and Jesus spoke about the age to come she was oblivious she had no idea what that would mean mm -hmm. are you here yes. that's really all I'm trying to get across here so let's go back there and brother you took a long way around to get there well, some things you got to really be, we're dealing with a verse of scripture here that everybody has their own ideas about rather than looking at it through the other scriptures that clarify it that's what i'm trying to do john chapter 4 again verse 21 jesus saith unto her woman believe me the hour cometh when you shall neither in this mountain nor yet at jerusalem worship the father say worship the father you worship you know not what can you see that yes. we know what we worship for salvation is of the jews but the hour cometh and now is could that possibly be the baptism of the holy ghost and having the holy ghost in the earth if he said and now is this is key to understanding this verse of scripture but the hour cometh and now is is say and now is. and now is well when jesus says and now is does he mean right then when jesus is standing there speaking at a well at a specific moment in time with this woman and now is we would have to pervert that verse to scripture to say that it is it's the age that is to come all of those other verses said it is to come mm -hmm. you see this so right now Jesus was in the earth right then at the now is moment re being revealed as who the Son of God and for him to be revealed as the Son of God people at that moment should be worshiping the Father mm -hmm. and if they're worshiping God as a father and here comes the Son that's a big deal when was all this happening during jesus's dispensation when he was on the earth so we see jesus being revealed as the son of god therefore much revelation in that day was about the father and the son 
the Father being God and His Son being Jesus. He was being revealed as the Son of God, therefore of necessity. He had to be talking about the Father. And in that day, in that day, that had to be the revelation of the day. Are you getting this? So the true worshipers in that day would be worshiping the Father because He's the Son. Peter said, you're the Christ, the Son of the living God, right? This was the revelation of the day. But we are not in that day. We read this verse of Scripture, or should read this verse of Scripture from our day, looking back and saying, that's in Jesus' time that he was saying that now is. Mm -hmm. So I'm not taking this verse that we're talking about out of context. I'm literally putting it in context in dispensational context so that we can understand it it's because when we take it out of dispensational context that we don't know what's going on but the hour cometh and now is when the true worshiper shall worship the father in spirit and truth for the father seeketh now when you look at this word seek what does seek mean he's hunting for it he's looking he's actively in pursuit and if you look up the word it means seeks after endeavors to he's seeking something that is not yet fulfilled seeks he's actively in pursuit it literally means to bring to a final conclusion or result see Jesus was working with the father to bring about this result that the father is seeking Luke 3 16 John answered saying unto them all I indeed baptize you with water but one mightier than I come the latchet of whose shoes I am not worthy to unloose he shall baptize you with the Holy Ghost and fire who's the one John's talking about Jesus so John's mission to bring about he was seeking to bring about the fulfillment of Jesus coming mm -hmm. then Jesus's mission was to fulfill and seek and to bring about who the Holy Ghost coming mm -hmm. yes. that would be the fulfillment of Jesus's ministry go back to John chapter 4 and when when it says um, the father seeketh or goes about to bring about the result those to worship him the father seeketh such to worship him verse 24 this is the resolve this is what the father is seeking to worship him God the Spirit mm -hmm. so if the father is seeking something to bring it about is it there yet Maybe. no he's still seeking it he's still endeavoring to do it the Holy Ghost had not yet come because Jesus was not yet glorified so verse 24 God is a spirit that's the resolve that the father and Jesus were seeking they were endeavoring to bring about this mission was Jesus to get people fully immersed into the Holy Ghost verse 24 God is a spirit and they that worship him must worship him in spirit and in truth could they have known this yet no they could not have known it yet because Jesus was not yet glorified he was still talking about the Father most of the time but the resolve to all of that in our dispensation is that the Holy Ghost was given the resolve to verse 23 is verse 24 where it says God is a spirit and they that worship him now there is a common statement in the body of Christ that there is no place in the Bible that says you should worship the Holy Ghost have you heard this before I've heard it way too many times there's no place in the Bible sounds right doesn't it yeah no place in the Bible let's read verse 24 again God in our dispensation you understand I tried to take you through this so you know where we are today we should be reading this from our dispensation if you're not I don't know how you got a hold of this video God is a spirit and they that worship him who is the Spirit of God Holy the Holy Ghost is he a spirit yes. is he God yes. and you should worship him yes. 
would he look an awful lot like this verse if God were to write it out as clearly as he possibly could they couldn't know this yet you'd be thinking that you know a lot of people don't know it now can we know it can we know him the Holy Ghost yes, yes. yes. they that worship him is he a him yes. is the Holy Ghost is a him Jesus said when he is come right. say when he is come when he is who said that Jesus said that in the same book of John when he is come let's read that again God is a spirit and they that worship him must worship him does your Bible say you must worship him does. mine does mm -hmm. how many don't worship him you'd be hard-pressed to find people that worship him as God mm -hmm. he is God God is a spirit and they that worship him it's not it's not you know uh, a suggestion he goes must worship him so you got to ask yourself some questions here when you come to verse 24 is the Holy Ghost God we know he's a spirit no one would argue that would they but you would have to argue to say that you're not supposed to worship the Holy Ghost you would have to argue that he's not God now I can argue all day I guess that he is God right I'll take you to a couple of verses of Scripture but you got to ask yourself the question is the Holy Ghost God God is a spirit and they that worship him must worship him are you kidding this if, when he is come he's the only God in the earth today what dispensation are we in the Holy Ghost dispensation this is the culmination of what the Father sought for you to be worshiping him the Spirit of God so should you worship him that's really where I'm trying I'm trying to give you scriptural reference because of these people that say that you shouldn't worship God the Spirit or the Holy Ghost mm -hmm. <laughs> should you worship him yes must that should be your knee knee-jerk reaction right they go oh should you worship the Holy Ghost must mm -hmm. say I must, I must. Worship, him. worship him who's God in our day Holy Ghost we must worship him where is this in, in most churches we must worship him in our day and age are you here here it says we must and I maintain that if you knew him as God you would worship him they that worship him worship him must worship him in spirit and in truth these are the true worshipers say true worshipers true worship. in our dispensation yes. the only dispensation that you're presently in by the way did you see that first of all mm -hmm. God is a spirit say God is a spirit. God is a spirit what spirit must we of necessity be talking about mm -hmm. the Holy Ghost first Corinthians chapter 3 verse 16 know you not that you are the temple of God and that the Spirit of God or the Spirit God dwells in you who dwells in you the Holy Ghost the Spirit God mm -hmm. know you not you're a temple what do temples do temples are supposed to worship God go to first Corinthians chapter 6 verse 19 what know you not that your body is the temple of the Holy Ghost the other verse said you're the temple of God you're the temple of the Holy Ghost what no you're not your body's the temple of the Holy Ghost which is in you which you have of God you're not your own for you are bought with a price therefore glorify who God in your body mm -hmm. who's in your body Holy. Holy Ghost God is the Holy Ghost God yes. God is a the spirit they that worship him must mm -hmm. worship him so we have the popular and common phrase and statement that you shouldn't worship the Holy Ghost we know whom we worship you see now Jesus was saying to the Samaritan woman that they had a certain kind of knowledge and a covenant and understanding of who whom they were worshiping 
but in our day we have more knowledge we have more revelation we're under a better covenant with better promises that wasn't at the day when Jesus was there talking to the Samaritan woman mm -hmm. and we know that God is a spirit Holy Ghost mm -hmm. couldn't have been revealed to them in that day and we must worship him verse 24 again God is a spirit and they that worship him must worship him who is God the Spirit the Holy Ghost does your Bible say that you must worship him yes. yeah worship who God the Spirit God the Holy Ghost do you see this verse of Scripture yes. If anybody were to say that there's no verse of Scripture that says you're supposed to worship the Holy Ghost I think Jesus did a really good job at clarifying that as much as he could in that day so I must worship him why because the Bible emphatically and clearly says so mm -hmm. why must you worship the Holy Ghost I must worship him because John chapter 4 verse 24 says that I must yeah. the Bible tells me so Amen. this I know does the Bible tell me that the Holy Ghost is a person yes. does the Bible tell me that the Holy Ghost is God yes. the same Bible is telling me that God is a spirit and they that worship him must say must must, must worship him in spirit and in truth well you shouldn't worship the Holy Ghost then you shouldn't believe the Bible so why do we worship him the Bible says so so if you're brave enough they brave enough brave. to step outside of most of your other brethren and obey this verse of Scripture and worship God the Holy Ghost mm -hmm. there's benefits to it mm -hmm. some of us know the benefits some of us experience the benefits now your religion is the way you worship God you can understand that right mm -hmm. say that your religion, religion. is the way, the way you worship, you worship God. God and we went through several of these transitions here with Jesus even talked about right but we're in the day where the Holy Ghost is God in the earth today and we worship him in spirit and truth mm -hmm. him who him the Holy Ghost well most people are not worshiping God the Holy Ghost did you know that yeah. I mean it seems kind of funny and they those that aren't would accuse us of some kind of heresy mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. heresy for obeying specifically and clearly what the Bible clearly tells us to do it's ridiculous mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. you're ridiculous <laughs> are there benefits to worshiping God the Holy Ghost yeah you know just because you weren't taught this in your church doesn't mean it's not true imagine that you not knowing something or your church not knowing something that happens to be true Jesus walked around telling people you couldn't handle the truth mm -hmm. until the Holy Ghost came that's one of the benefits of worshiping him can you see that mm -hmm. you're worshiping God he knows everything and he'll teach you all things second Corinthians chapter 3 verse 16 nevertheless when it shall turn to the Lord the veil shall be taken away and we understand when a veil is taken away you can see what's behind the veil when I pull a veil aside you go oh a brand new car mm -hmm. or whatever it is behind the veil if you will be brave enough to step outside of your church step outside of your brethren your brothers and sisters in Christ and worship the Holy Ghost as the Living God what do you mean by that I mean use the words I worship you Holy Ghost say I worship you, I worship you. Holy, Ghost. Holy Ghost you are doing something that a lot of people aren't doing you're stepping outside but you're fulfilling John chapter 4 verse 24 if you do that when you turn to worshiping the Holy Ghost a veil is taken away when you turn to worship the Holy Ghost a veil is taken away when you turn to worship the Holy Ghost who's God in the earth today a veil is taken away now the Lord is that spirit using the words I worship you Holy Ghost is a way to take the veil away it's literally pulling on the string you ever see those strings that open a curtain you're opening the curtain to see that the Lord is that spirit 
verse 17 now the Lord is that spirit and where the Spirit of the Lord is or where the Spirit is Lord there is liberty or freedom now let me ask you a question is it possible to have that liberty or freedom if the Spirit hasn't been revealed to you as being Lord it's not possible when you begin worshiping him the veil is taken away and you see him as Lord verse 18 but we all with open face beholding as in a glass the glory of the Lord are changed into the same image from glory to glory even as by the Spirit of the Lord when it's revealed to you that the Holy Ghost is God and you begin to worship him the veils taken away and you begin to be changed can you testify to the fact I testify to the fact you go, well, why why am I seeing things different than all my other brethren because they've not stepped out to worship God the Spirit the Holy Ghost and therefore they're behind a veil and they can't see it yet mm -hmm. but when you worship the living God the Holy Ghost as God in the earth today the veil is taken away and you begin to be changed from one glory to the next glory but you got to go to the first glory first using the words I worship you Holy Ghost it's guaranteed say it's guaranteed, it's guaranteed. you will change you will be changed from one glory to the next glory let me pray for you Holy Ghost I thank you that these people are being changed by this word that they heard this evening and great things shall come to pass says the Spirit of the Lord as they yield their lips to me and begin to use the words I worship you Holy Ghost things will open up to them and they'll be able to see the new and the new way shall say to them here I am walk ye in it and we worship you Holy Ghost for it in Jesus name Amen. Amen if you have an offering or a tithe you want to hold it in your hand say this after me Holy Ghost, Holy Ghost. I thank you thank that you are God in the earth today that I am blessed and I bring my offering or tithe to you and I thank you that it is multiplied under the ministry and multiplied back to me greatly I am rich I am blessed I am healed and my youth is renewed the father is I shall fulfill everything that you've called me to in this earth in Jesus name amen